Hey everybody, it's Chishao here from Chishao.in4. Today, this is the first episode of this、uh, Salesforce Developer video series. In this video, we're gonna talk about the Salesforce DX and、uh, the Scratch Hook. Okay, we're gonna spend a couple minutes on this topic. So we're gonna use this as the foundation of the following video series. We're gonna build a demo repository, and in the future, we'll build up more features along the journey. Okay. So the purpose of this video is to share the knowledge that I have learned. So I have been as a Salesforce developer for about half a year. I've learned something, and I'm still reading books, you know, read lot blogs, and all sorts of information around me to try to become a better Salesforce developer. So I'm trying to use this video also to help myself to internalize those knowledge that I've learned. Okay. So without further ado. Uh, let's、uh, jump into the DX. So DX definitely is one skill set that、uh, all Salesforce developer need to have under the belt. It's modernized、uh, a new command utility tool comparing to the old traditional or focused、uh, development process. This is definitely more robust,、uh, flexible. So the first thing you need to do if you don't have access to a, a Scratch org. You need to go to this page to sign up with a new account. Then you get 30-day trial period, and you can play around with the Dev Hub and the Scratch Org feature. So I've already put this link down below in the description, so you can click the description and follow along with me to sign up. So the first thing to do, of course, is to get the email address and then sign up with your information.、It、takes a minute or two, then the Dev Hub、uh, feature should be enabled for you. Okay, this is the first step, and then the second step is to install the DX command line in your local environment. So now I've already had this installed in my local environment. So I tap SFDX, you see it pop up something. So what you need to do if you don't have it installed yet is to install the Salesforce DX. It's the same thing as the CLI. The old name is called CLI, but it's basically the same thing. I will put this link again in the description. You just follow along according to your OS, and then、uh, install accordingly. So what I have done is that I used the, the button line, this、uh, npm. So because I'm using Node.js every now and then, so I use the npm. I found it's more robust. It's a cross-platform thing. So anyway, you should have the DX installed, and then we are ready to go to the third step. And once you have DX installed, of course you need to understand how DX handles, what type of command lines DX allow us to to use. So I've created this DX cheat sheet, so it contains the most often used command lines in DX. So why do I do this? Because I found it's extremely difficult to remember all these command lines, all these parameters, and、uh, it's it's not so easy to do, and it doesn't make sense for us to to rem remember all of them. So what you should do is again you come to this cheat sheet. Either you can Google SFDX cheat sheet, or you can again go to description to type the link to get to. This cheat sheet. So we quickly walk it through. So what it does is that it allows us to, for example, list、uh, what's the current、uh, Dev Hub you are connected and what、uh, Scratch Org you have. And then, of course, it allows us to log in with your Dev Hub account. It logs out, and you can create. Uh, uh, see, this is the change the password, generate the password. You can、uh, do all sorts of things to interact with the Scratch Org and your local. Um, code or metadata. So we're gonna in this video to do some basic stuff. For example, first of all, we can do logging, right? So this is the DX logging command line. So what it does, it opens the web page, and、uh, you you put your username or there for the Dev Hub, and then it will log in、uh, successfully. So then we use the list command, SFDX list, to see what account. We have logged in, and uh, what uh, Scratch Org has been created. As we can see, we have this Dev Hub account already connected, and then、uh, I have already created a、uh, Dev One Scratch Org in the screen. And、uh, of course,、uh, we need to、uh, uh, let's say to create a 
a DX project, right? In addition to creating the scratch org. So the DX, uh, you can use this command again. All the commands you can fi find in the cheat sheet. If you don't know what these parameters really mean, a good tip is to use dash dash help for all these commands, and then it'll list down what those uh, parameters really mean. So it's a really uh, needy uh, kind of uh, command. I recommend you to use it if you don't understand those parameters. So um, use the create a, uh, a command to create the scratch org. I think there is some um, create project or something, right? I think this is the one. So force project create, it will create the a local DX project for you. So I have already created uh, the project called the Diablo 2 and uh, if I go back to my Visual Studio code, the Diablo 2 um, uh, uh, path contains these uh, creating out of box, you know, uh, the files for me. And the one important uh, thing is that uh, we should, when we create the scratch arc, we should uh, give a uh, a definition file, right? The definition file in in my repo it looks like this. So what I did is I I set the scratch org to be enterprise edition, and uh, it should uh, contains the communities feature, and uh, enable the debug Apex feature, and also has the API for me to interact with the environment. In addition to that, the country means what's the language in the UI, the uh, standard US English. So there are different features like uh, whether you want to enable the cache feature or not. So according to your environment uh, requirements, uh, you need to set this uh, definition file in advance and later you need to run this uh, create, uh, project, uh, create a scratch org and pass in this dash f so that the scratch org will be created according to your requirement. Then of course you don't know this all these features what things to be inserted into this uh, JSON definition file. Then what you should do is to go to this scratch org definition file in Salesforce documentation. Again, down below in the description uh, URL, you read it through and uh, then. Um, you know, just insert the, the the parameters, the values into into the file according to your own requirement. So that's about how to create the stuff. So we have created the local project. You, we have uh, somehow created the scratch org, which is uh, uh, linked with uh, your local project. And what else we can do is, I think there's a status status command dx status command. What this one does is that it tries to uh, check the difference between the remote scratch scratch org and your local uh, newly created project so to see what uh, are the difference. For example if you update the metadata in the scratch org, for example you create an object, you update the field then those things will be listed here as like a change status then you can pull down those um, changes from the remote scratch org to your local environment. This is how we, you know, updated the metadata in the remote and then pull down to your local. Then uh, the next time when you create a new scratch org, you just push all your metadata from your local to that new scratch org and all the metadata will be popping up in the new environment. So this is exactly what we said, uh, source code driven, source code as the truth kind of development process. This is what the DX is aiming for, okay? So this is everything about this first video. We've talked about the DX, we've talked about the scratch org, so definitely go to these links we just mentioned. And also in addition to that, I've saved all the source codes um, uh, we're gonna talking about in the near future as well in this video, saving the source code in my uh, repo in the GitHub. I've also put this down below in the description. So follow me along. In the next video, we're gonna uh, create a object fields according to our need for this app 
So that's the next step. We will use DX, use the scratch org. Somehow we will see how the, the metadata is synchronized in between. Okay, so that's the end of the first video. Uh, hopefully you liked it, and uh, please thumb up if you do enjoy my video and uh, follow along with me, and uh, give me comments, leave comments below in the video. So hopefully we will have some uh, uh, conversations for for the Salesforce development. And I'm definitely not an expert. Let's learn Salesforce together. Okay. Thank you. I I hope you have a wonderful day today. Bye bye.